This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to quantum proof Bitcoin. In other words, how to protect Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network from quantum computing attacks. This was a question from Chef Hikes. Can you talk about quantum proofing Bitcoin in a future video? So here we have an example of a quantum computer. These are still relatively new and not as powerful as they eventually will be. And it's important to note that in spite of what Bitcoin critics say, Quantum computers are not a threat just to Bitcoin. They're also a threat to the internet and to the entire global banking system, both of which use cryptography that can be cracked by a powerful quantum computer. So if you're gonna argue that quantum computing is a reason not to own Bitcoin, you also must argue that it's a reason not to keep any money or securities in a bank or brokerage account. And this is something no one ever said. I can't sleep at night with my cash at Bank of America because of quantum computers. And this is what many Bitcoin critics do in spite of their critique of Bitcoin and quantum. Now, the first target of a quantum computing attack would probably be, rather than Bitcoin, it would probably be a traditional bank or government database. Maybe Department of Defense or CIA might be two plausible targets. Now, it's true that a powerful quantum computer may be something that's in the thousands of qubits, could derive a Bitcoin private key from a Bitcoin public key using Shor's algorithm and in this way steal the Bitcoin. Because if you have a private key to an address, you can sign a transaction that moves the Bitcoin. I'm going to link to this Wikipedia article about Shor's algorithm, which is basically a way of finding the prime factors of an integer and a powerful quantum computer could reverse engineer the private key of a public address using this. The current signature scheme or signature algorithm for Bitcoin is ECDSA. You've probably heard of this elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. And this is the one that would be most at threat, though there's also uh, Schnorr, uh, Schnorr signatures, which we're going to talk about. So how to protect against a quantum attack. Bitcoin needs to move to a quantum resistant digital signature algorithm at a certain point. Quantum computers are not a threat. As far as I can tell the Bitcoin mining, there's really no way to speed up SHA-256 hashing any faster than ASICs do it today. But Bitcoin, a, uh, a quantum computer would be a threat to the digital signature algorithms that Bitcoin uses. Would it be easy to add a quantum resistant Bitcoin address and Bitcoin digital signature algorithm to Bitcoin? Yes, it would actually only require a simple soft fork. And you can bet that there would be widespread consensus for this critical upgrade, unlike a non-critical proposal like drive chains, which we've been talking about over the past two days, where there's no real widespread support, a quantum attack, or the looming threat of a quantum attack would certainly be enough to mobilize and galvanize a soft fork. Now, would it be difficult to add a new digital signature algorithm to Bitcoin? Actually not, it'd be quite easy. And we know this because in fact, in the last two years, we just added a new digital signature algorithm called Schnorr Signatures, as I just mentioned, as part of the Taproot upgrade, which happened in November of 2021. So it's there for you to use. You can already use Schnorr Signatures on Bitcoin if you're using a Bitcoin Taproot address. Now, once this new quantum resistant digital signature algorithm has been added, this would not be Schnorr signatures. This would be an updated quantum version. And so you'd basically have these different signatures working in parallel. You could still use ECDSA as you can right now today. You could still use Schnorr signatures, and then there'd be a quantum resistant digital signature algorithm added to the protocol to Bitcoin Core as well. And once this new signature algorithm has been added, everyone who owns Bitcoin will then need to send their Bitcoin to one of these new quantum resistant address types. Will it be difficult to motivate, pe motivate people to do this? No, simply because if they don't do it, they're gonna have all their money stolen by a quantum computing attack. Then there's a question about dead people, people have lost their private keys. There's a question of Satoshi's approximately 1 million Bitcoin that he mined in the early days. Unless these coins can also be moved to a quantum resistant address and you need the private key in order to do that. If the private key has been lost, there's no way to do this. But unless these coins are moved to a quantum resistant address, they can be stolen by a quantum attacker. And many people have hypothesized that one of the first ways we'll know that there's a powerful quantum computer out there is we will see Satoshi's coins move for the first time. And it will not be Satoshi moving them, it will be an attacker. 
This raises the question, should we do another soft fork to freeze early coins, maybe 2010 and earlier, freeze Satoshi's coins so they cannot be moved or stolen by a quantum attacker? And I don't think so. I don't think this is a good idea. First of all, it's not a very nice thing to do to Satoshi without his permission because this is his private property. Second, we don't know for sure which early coins belong to Satoshi and which ones belong to other early miners and OG. So it'd be a shame to freeze their coins as well. In fact, it would be theft. It would be a criminal act, in my opinion. And that's a game for politicians and central bankers and not one that we Bitcoiners want to play. Now, which types of Bitcoin addresses are vulnerable to a quantum attack? The earliest type of address, which was used by Satoshi, among others, the P2PK or pay to public key, these are especially vulnerable because the public key is sitting right there invisible and it can thus be reverse engineered by a quantum computer using Shor's algorithm to reverse it reverse engineer it and obtain the private key. So that's a very old type of address that's not used anymore, though there is certainly quite a bit of Bitcoin stored in some of those early addresses. Then we have the more modern version, which is actually paid to a hash of the public key or pay to public key hash P2PKH. These addresses are only vulnerable to a quantum attack if they have been reused. And in a P2PKH address, the public key is revealed only when the owner initiates a transaction. So if you've never moved any Bitcoin out of a P2PKH address, it is safe. If you, it's safe from a quantum attack. If you have moved even a tiny amount of Bitcoin though out of one of these addresses, it's no longer safe because the private key, I'm sorry, because the public key has been revealed already when you did that transaction and then it can be used because it's been exposed, it can be used to reverse engineer the private key. So this is yet another reason to always generate a fresh receive address when you're receiving Bitcoin. Do not reuse addresses. It, con it compromises your privacy as well as makes you open to a, uh, a quantum attack. And if your Bitcoin is sitting in one of these P2PKH uh, pay to public key hash addresses that has been spent from in the past, you should consider moving your coins to a fresh P2PKH uh, address. If you're an OG and your coins are sitting in one of those really old address types, the P2PK ad addresses, you should probably move your coins as well to a fresh pay to public key hash address just to be safe. To conclude though, if there is ever a quantum attack on the traditional banking system and on Bitcoin simultaneously, you can guess which one I think will recover more quickly. Will it be the system run by mercenary salarymen who enjoy working in a slow and bureaucratic environment, which is what the political and banking environment is? Or is it the one run by enthusiastic volunteers, super smart cypherpunks and more libertarian types? I would bet on the second system being resuscitated much more quickly than the first system and being resuscitated in a way that's fair to the members of the community. You can only imagine what would happen to the US banking system. Maybe you'd have bail-ins or some sort of other corruption paired with this, and that's not gonna happen in Bitcoin. You don't have to worry too much about this. We're probably at least a decade away from having a quantum computer that can constitute a real threat to Bitcoin. There's $500 billion on the line today. That's the market cap of Bitcoin, and it's probably gonna be worth a lot more after the next halving and the next bull run. So you can be sure that Bitcoiners are incentivized to be ready when the time comes. And they're much more likely to be ready than is the traditional banking system or the US government, which is very slow moving, very bureaucratic, and very stupid in the way it does things. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.